Good evening, everyone. Um, James Holmes Jr. with um, Black Lion. And today I have a special guest. Uh, this is Mr. Makai Lewis. Makai is the founder of the 8 to 18 Truth Center in St. Paul. Um, Makai, do you want to introduce yourself? You did a good job. You <laughs> did a good job. Yep. Um, it's actually 8 to 18 Truth Center and African American Museum. So make sure that you come through and take a tour, and we're going to talk all about it today. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about um, um, the, the meeting of uh, um, uh, Mr. Lewis and myself. We actually met through uh, Al Flowers uh, in, I don't know, almost even happenstance. Uh, and um, just almost instantly, I know from my perspective, I was quite impressed uh, with just what I was hearing from him as far as the efforts of, of what he's doing um, and over the Truth Center. And, and he actually, almost right away, invited me out to come and visit. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, I'll go over there. And um, this is no exaggeration. When I got out there and I walked in his center at St. Paul, I was immediately, immediately, um, blown away and it was evident to me very early it's like this brother gets it this brother gets it do you, do you want to talk on that a, a little bit Makai? I mean you know um I just have to say I you know um give that glory to my higher power to God you know um you know I come from a, a good background you know a, a praying mother um, I had a father in the household, you know, so I definitely have to, you know, um, say that probably without them, you know, structuring the house the way they did, I may have turned out a little different, you know, so I definitely want to, you know, graciously tell them thank you so much. And what, uh, what, what is the function of the Truth Center? What does it do? What kind of programs do you guys have? And, and can you give us a little bit of the background as far as how you got started and why you got started? and so forth well um i initially got started back in 1996 an officer by the name of ed lemon had noticed that i was doing some um, community events i used to you know do free barbecues i would connect with some of the um restaurants and you know local businesses in the neighborhood and um you know so i started doing community events just it was just my way of really trying to get my foot in the door to hopefully one day be um you know in that political world um so i started out 96 kind of doing those things ed lemon you know he uh kind of paved the way to you know get introduced me to you know bigger foundations like the ymca ywca and stuff like that to kind of like you know get me you know to be familiarized with what the corporate side of doing you know community-based work you know looked like um so that kind of just transitioned in years and years of me continuing to, to try to fight for change in my neighborhood. I grew up, you know, in the gang era and watching um, a lot of my friends fall victim to um, losing their lives to the gang life. And, and, and I just decided that I wanted to do something so that the kids up under me wouldn't fall victim to, you know, some of the things that me and some of my friends have fell victim to. Um, so that kind of started my, you know, my work in the community, trying to make change. And um, eventually it led into where I'm at now, and that's uh, having a truth center. Um, the truth center is somewhere where I wanted to have a safe space for kids where they could come, um, you know, have a place to play the video game or just connect with each other, watch movies, you know, um, you know, eat, um, get you know, any type of funding they might need just to help them out with just everyday life's, you know, um, struggles. And, you know, so what we decided to do is I, I had this place and I wanted to connect them with where they came from, what's inside of them culturally. Um, I wanted them to be able to see some of the people that have lost their lives and what we have went through as far as a culture to get where we are at right now. And, um, you know, so I, I built the center to reflect that. And then when they're there at the center, we have classes that we talk to them about 
everything from community awareness, conflict resolution, um, gang rehabilitation, um, just to name a few. We have depression and suicide prevention. You know, just trying to give these kids the necessary skills that, you know, we feel they're going to need in order to be productive uh, leaders soon in, you know, in this life. And I'll tell you, when I uh, went out to visit him, um, I think it was, a, what, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. maybe, something yeah. like that, um, I was so impressed with the programs that he has going on. Um, a lot of the programs are designed so that the kids have positive things and activities that they can get involved with. And there's such a lack of that in the Twin Cities right now. But even further than that, um, he even has a classroom set up. Uh, in the classroom, they address different things. Um, and I know you and I, we talked about uh, some of the work that I do as far as uh, um, um, financial literacy and things like that, um, uh, that we will you know, incorporate into that. But he's doing so much else as far as uh, um, problem solving, um, you're talking about resolutions and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a safe space and it's a fun space and it's a learning space. Um, do you want to elaborate on any of that as far as is how they're invited in to, to be comfortable, but at the same time, uh, you're still feeding um, good knowledge to them? Yeah, well, um, I just structured it the way that I felt, um, you know, coming up, there was centers such as um, Jimmy Lee Recreation Center, Oxford, you know, um, North Commons, different places that we were able to go as kids and just be kids and play and just have that, you know, that fun without, um, you know, the doors being locked for certain things, tournaments or different stuff. And like now, kids don't have a place where they can go. So they're kind of forced to sit in the house and play these video games because of being able to get up and go anywhere is gone. And then if they do go to the local recreation centers, they're being rented out by basketball tournaments or just different things. That's not giving these kids, you know, that, that ample time to play. So I just wanted to create a space where these kids can continue to feel like kids. They're growing up so fast, you know. Also, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, some of the households um, are the new era households. We've lost that traditional um, foundation in, in our homes and parenting is not the same that it once was you know um like some of the comedians say sometimes that old grandma is not in the house no more well like the grandmamas now is 30 years old 35 years old mm -hmm. so you know they're not around so the values and, and and you know what we want to instill in these kids just ain't the same the music the media um television everything is you know telling our kids to you know, go be ruthless, go be savages, you know, be promiscuous, um, you know, any type of, um, you know, uh, loyalty or whatever or self-respect is just totally being thrown out the window. So I wanted to create a space where I could let them know and the people involved could let them know that, no, you are very valuable. You know, your life is valuable. What you do to yourself, what you put in your body means so much. And you know, we're just going to try to, you know, continue to keep this space going so that these kids know that, you know, what this music and media is telling them is just not true. They're not that. They're so much bigger and better than that. Mm -hmm. That's so much. That, that's so true. So true. Um, one of the ways that um, I connected instantly almost with Brother uh, Makai Lewis is it did not take me long to see that um, he had this vision, and as far as I'm concerned, the vision is like, I think, the cheat code. Um, there are so many places, forms, venues uh, out there that say that they're looking for the solutions in the black community. And what I've been hearing a lot of is a lot of eloquent rhetoric, and that's why we move a little differently with Black Lion. Largely, I'm sure why we're not funded to is because um, we are considered a boots on the ground organization. At least I definitely define us as that. And I hope this brother agrees with that. And I hope most of you guys out there that's been following us agree with that because we actually 
um, put a lot of effort into doing things that are tangible um, for our people now and uh, preparing them for the future. So I was so impressed with the fact that Brother Lewis here just started. He just started doing what he thought was right. No funding, none of that, right? For the most part, Brother, similar, similar to my situation, but just doing the right thing. You want to speak on that? Um, you know, to me, I heard this from a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Spike Moss, uh, and he told yeah, that's one of my mentors. Yeah, <laughs> a great, great. We had him on last week. Oh, this, yeah, week, yeah, this week, this yeah. week, great man. And um, you know, for years, I kind of sat back, pretty much like a lot of us, and thought that there would come a day when um, the powers that be would look out for us and try to help us with the change that we need for ourselves. Until talking with him, he let me finally see that the oppressor will never fund our freedom. Um, it's too valuable for them. Um, whether it's the judicial systems, you know, whether it's the, you know, um, lack of resources that we'll be able to have economically or, you know, the impact that we may be able to serve if we ever come out of that hole and come from up under the foot of the oppressor, what we may be as the threat to them. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, um, I took it upon myself to say, you know what? Um, my mother taught me that, you know, you go get you a loaf of bread and, and some sandwich meat or some peanut butter and, you know, you whip it up and you can feed a lot just off of that. And that's one of the things that I said to myself that if it takes the, you know, all I got to bare minimum, then that's what I would use to try to change my community. That's what I would use to give these kids you know, so they can be inspired to want to, you know, create change. Um, I just, you know, at this point in life, I felt with myself that I wanted my jewelry or my fancy cars or my nice home just to go to the importance of, you know, making these kids feel better in life. You know, if I could go without, you know, some liquor or something, but a kid can go with having some food to eat or some shoes on their feet, then, hey, to me, that, that's a, un, you know, that, that tray right there is a no-brainer. And I'm willing to do that. You're an awesome, awesome guy, brother. Awesome guy. I mean, it, it doesn't take long uh, for somebody to see that you are really, truly a reflector. Um, when I was out your way and we were talking, man, I was out there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised this brother didn't run me away, hey, man. <laughs> James, you got to go home because <laughs> I was just so uh, immersed into it um, because I'm like, this brother gets it. I'm telling you, this brother gets it. So it's like big money out there. If they actually really actually want to help something, which we all know that's generally not the case, but if they really did, all they'd have to do is just come and get the uh, foreman from uh, Brother Makai Lewis here because he has got uh, that puzzle already figured out. And so what we're doing is we're addressing it in a small way, and that's fine um, because I do live by the uh, philosophy is don't confuse what you can't do with what you can do. And so we do, and I love, I love the way that he proceeds on that way. But anyway, I digress. We were talking about the um, um, barbecues that you were having at the park without the permit. I thought that was like a really uh, a really cool story. Can you can you tell our audience about that that whole event? Yeah. Um, so some years back, um, I was uh, in a group, um, music group, and we didn't have money back then. It you know you had to go to a place called Disc Makers in order to get your, your music pressed up on a CD for everybody else to hear. So that was kind of the only outlet we had to get our music heard. And so I thought about one day of doing a neighborhood uh, barbecue and I just figured that the donations that we would make would be enough to, you know, um, send off for our CDs. So I went and flyed the neighborhood and um, every house, literally, for blocks and blocks, we just, you know, put flyers on there and just invited everybody, everybody out to um, the barbecue. Um, so I took, got with some of the neighborhood uh, vendors and got the meat. I, you know, caught deals. I caught, you know, grocery store specials, whatever it took, you know, just to be able to get 
you know, enough stuff that I, I thought we would need to pull this barbecue off, you know. Um, so as I did it, you know, I, I, had, I knew that, you know, this big event would catch the eyes of probably the parks and recs, you know, centers or the police department and, you know, and I just, you know, anything associated with us as blacks is with coming together often brings a lot of wide eyes and curiosity from others. And so with, with, with doing that, I kind of had that in the forefront of my mind of saying, hey, I'll just, you know, combat that when, when I come to it. So the day came with a barbecue, it ended up maybe six, 700 people showed up. I mean, it was just huge. And um, I had the jumping thing out there for the kids, um, uh, the dunk tanks, you know. We went all in just to try to get these, you know, these kids a, a, a place to go and just to have a good time here in the community. And Lord behold, um, maybe a, two hours into the fun and festivities, here comes um, Ramsey County Parks and Rec superintendent or whatnot. He comes and, you know, he comes and he, who's doing this? Who's doing this? Who's in charge? And I'm like, I am, you know. And so he looked at me and he said, you know what? Um, do you have a permit for this? And I was like, no, I do not. And, um, you know, my thing was, I knew that I would need a permit for it, but I just felt like, you know, I wasn't in position to get a permit because my background wasn't the best and I felt that they wouldn't probably give me a permit anyway. So I said, you know what, um, if these people come to shut this down, they're not gonna be, you know, have people aren't gonna be mad at me. They're gonna be mad at the state. These kids are gonna be mad. There's, you know, three, 400 kids here and they're gonna be mad at the city of St. Paul. They're not gonna be mad at me all over a piece of paper. So I just took my chance and that's, that's what happened. You know, the superintendent came in and he looked and, you know, he said I would, he wanted to shut it down, but he just looked and said, you know, seen the face of these kids and was like, you know, well, I'm not gonna shut you down. You know, technically you're supposed to have a permit. You know, he opened up the doors and said, well, if you need one from, this moment on, you know, contact me and, you know, we'll go from there. And, you know, it turned out just great. And he ended up leaving and, you know, we had a fantastic day, you know, definitely a memory for the mm. book. Mm. That's a beautiful story. And I'll tell you something else that I thought was profound um, is uh, when you were explaining to me, how uh, you actually have a good relationship with the uh, St. Paul Police Force. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, not only that, Bob Fletcher's man, he's been tremendous throughout. Now what's his title? Bob Fletcher is the, um, the sheriff. Um, he's the Ramsey County sheriff. What color sheriff. is Bob Fletcher? He's white. Yeah, he's white. Um, you know, but he acts black, you know, so he, you know, he, that's my <laughs> dude, you know. He, I mean, um, mm -hmm. Bob is just, he's been there, you know, he was actually my basketball coach when I was a kid. And uh, throughout the years, he's always, despite me being on, you know, other side of the, the fence than him, he's always respected me and, you know, always encouraged me every time we've seen each other or managed to speak that, you know, hey, I could do better and be better. And, you know, for years I just had to, you know, bump my head and, you know, go through the learning process in which a lot of us go through by falling victim to, you know, our communities. And, um, you know, Bob was there, Chief Axtell, which is, he's a police chief right now in St. Paul. He's a good dude too. Like, you know, um, you know, I can say that there are some, you know, police officers and sheriffs and, you know, that are out there that really would like to see a change. You know, they really are, you know, willing to fight to try to make our communities, you know, safer for all of us, you know, and, um, I just think that, you know, we focus a lot on the bad that the police do and not enough on some of the good things that they do do, you know, in our communities. And, you know, maybe, you know, times have changed for that, but I just think as us as blacks, we need to start to understand that we need more police officers of color. We need more judges of colors, more lawyers of colors, more doctors of colors, more ambulance. Uh, EMTs of colors, firefighters, whatever. We need, you know, these people of color to start to, you know, um, 
be part of these networks because you know if not we're just gonna sit back and complain about what they're not doing well how about we go assist them or we go take it over and we do it ourselves you know i think that's the way out with the george floyd situation i mean honestly i don't believe it would have ended like that if it was some black cops that was there you know overseeing the process or arresting him or whatever it took you know or whatever was happening i just think that you know, if there was some black cops there, it probably wouldn't have ended that way. So we need to stop telling our kids, you know, that all they can be is, you know, sports heroes or, you know, um, dancers or singers and entertainers. No, nah, there's a pilots, astronauts, you know, there's so much that we can be as blacks. We just got to start to, you know, check ourselves and believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Brother, that is so... So well said, such a, such a strong message. Um, I think part of what you deal with and part of what I deal with is that since we're on such a uh, small organic level, a lot of people just don't even know what we're doing. You know, they don't really know the work that we're doing. Um, but I would encourage you guys, um, you know, to pour into uh, the work that uh, Brother uh, Makai Lewis is doing over at the uh, True Center, which is spelled T R U C E, and that's what, 8 to 18. Mm -hmm. um, so if they want to pour into you and maybe contribute or donate, um, what's the best uh, contact uh, information for them? Uh, www, um, the number is 8218truthcenter.org. You can go on there and, you know, find find out more about the center, you can find out about how to donate, uh, how to get involved, how to get your kids involved. Um, the truth part of the center is, you know, if you're being bullied at school or if you're having a conflict with somebody, we even do co-parenting. If you're having a problem, you know, co-parenting, um, you know, reach out to us. We'll reach out to the parties involved and try to get you guys to come and sit down and, and figure it out before it ends up escalating to something that could hurt you know, hurt all of us. Um, I had a, a young man uh, not too long ago that hadn't seen his son in close to three years. And I put this on Facebook um, and he contacted me. He gave me the child's mother's information. I reached out to her, um, obviously from, you know, years of him promising things that he didn't stand up to. There was a frustration that was there that the mother at the time was not willing to you know, put her son back in front of but we talked and talked and talked and her um, she finally made a decision to give him another shot um, I got him together they came to the center the son came in seeing his dad for the first time in three years it was like they didn't miss a beat they hugged and you know um, I had games and stuff there they sat and they played the game together and they hung out a little bit and um, I keep up with that family and they're, they're back rocking, you know, him, her, um, they're co-parenting and, 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 and that's all it took was just, you know, being able to reconnect and somebody take that initiative just to try to reach out and make an amends with, you know, somebody who you're probably having problems with or at least you think you're having problems with when realistically it's probably dead and gone. It's just that, you know, that animosity through you guys are still there because you don't know or realize that it's gone. You ain't took time out to go check on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesome. Awesome. Uh, my brother, Makai Lewis, I appreciate you taking that drive. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love road trips. Because, I mean, literally, he's all the way east and I'm all the way west. Uh, his brother came out to... Uh, the Black Line Studios uh, uh, for this message. Uh, so, you know, grateful to you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. I absolutely me. love the work you're doing. Um, man, um, he's one of these, I don't say that about very many people, but uh, he's one of those guys where you look at him and you go, he's that dude. He's that dude. He's that dude. Uh, awesome, awesome uh, work you're doing, brother. Do you have any closing remarks? Now, I just want to say I thank you so much for having me come out here. That ride, it wasn't nothing. I, I love road trips. It's kind of like a way for me to just ride and think and get my thoughts together. And it's relaxing for me, so that ride definitely didn't bother me. Um, I just say I love the work that you're doing. I'm so glad to Al Flowers. Shout out to Al for, you know, connecting us with each other, you know. So, Al, you know, I definitely, definitely know we got some huge things in store. And 
um, you know, everybody that's watching, you know, just take that time out, you know. Um, I say it's, it's, it's better now to, you know, take time out and put your, you know, your kid in a program, you know, before you have to go take time off from work to take him to court. And, um, you know, so we're here. I'm here. Black Lion Foundation is here. The number of the phone call, the text, email, whatever it is, the way my email is M A L Frost, the number 11 at Gmail. So that's Mal Frost 11 at Gmail. And on Facebook, I'm uh, Mickey Frost, M I K I F R O S T. My last name is hyphenated Lewis Frost. So if you want to connect with me, Facebook, I'm right there. True Center is located 175 Lexington Parkway North. St. Paul, Minnesota, 55104. Come in and take a tour. Hours are Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, hey, let's That's right on the corner of Lexington and Saint Sel Selby. Selby, right? Yep, yep right, right on the right corner. On corner. So it's easy to find, real yeah. easy to find. Uh, this brother, he's done real nice things with it. I encourage you guys to uh, either contact him by email or on his website, even better. Uh, they're welcome to come out and visit you, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday yeah. through Friday. I'm there. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so with that said, um, we're out of here and we're uh, onward and upward, um, continuing to work hard. And um, as always, um, you guys pray for us. We'll pray for you. And we're out. Peace.